All right, after you get the ride height sensor out of the way, next step is to come in here. You have an 18 millimeter bolt with an 18 millimeter nut that connects the upper camber arm to the subframe. Now these are going to be torqued to about 115 Newton meters and a flex head ratchet is almost entirely necessary. Will make your life a lot easier. So come in, crack this loose. There we go, that is not loose. Oh, not completely loose. Almost. Now it's loose. There we go. Take the nut off. Good to go. And just to make life a bit easier, I'm going to drop my wrench on the ground. Just kidding, that makes life horrible. We are going to go in here, and we are going to just thread this out. This will no longer be needed. You're supposed to replace these every time you take the control arms off anyway, according to Tesla, which is fine. Better to be safe than sorry and have a major suspension component fail over a $2 bolt. And then you're going to come in here on the opposite side of the camber arm. That is also an 18 millimeter. That is torqued to 110 Newton meters. Crack that loose. Come in here. There is no nut on this. It threads directly into the knuckle. And thread that out. All the roots for that. Now, upper camera on. It should pop right up. And there you have it. The indent right here. I'm not focusing. But this indent goes forward. Because that is what this locks into. So you got to make sure the indent goes forward and you don't take out the wrong bushing. Alright, now the next order of business is we're going to press this bushing out. Take the tool that comes with the kit, clamp it in a vise. Put a washer on. If you don't, you will run into problems. I found that out the hard way with the last one I did. Always put a washer on. Otherwise, it's going to crush the aluminum. And you won't be able to get it off. Alright, now you just go through. And you slowly tighten You don't want to go too quick, because then you run into problems. Slowly tighten it down. It's going to take a little bit, but eventually you will see it start to move. It takes a lot of force to move this. 
This is our Preston. You don't want to fall out driving down the road. Now, depending how old they are, there is a good possibility of them tearing. This one's starting to move. He needs a stair master when you've got a bushing press. Let me just keep going. And when you get towards the end, make sure you hold the camber on. Because if you don't, it's going to fall off. This is. I don't know if it's cast or if it's billet. I highly doubt it's billet, but it is very, very lightweight aluminum. This thing falls on the floor and you crack an ear, you're done for. And there you go. Let me just keep dropping everything today. And there is the pressed out bushing, ready for the next step. All right, the next order of business is going to be to install bushing halves. Now these, just pop right in like that. Do it to both sides. There you go. Now. I've already done it, but you, the grease that comes in the kit, it's a silicone based lubricant, grease up the inside of that and the outside of the barrel, make sure it's fully in or uh, coated. You can do this, it should just, it's going to be tight, but not, it shouldn't be too tight. And there you go. It just slides right in. Now, just to ensure a proper seat, I like to just give it a little extra clamp. Just to make sure everything's good and seated. go all right now that we have our bushings and barrel installed we're going to want to put them in the car now a little trick that I like is to make sure the hole is facing as far back as possible. <coughs> it makes installing it a world easier. So there you go. Get it lined up. It is going to be a very tight fit. There we go. Now, unlike the factory, you have a flat shank bolt. So, and also, unlike the factory, 
I found it a lot easier to install back to front instead of front to back. If you install front to back, you might not be able to get in there to adjust it once everything is back together. And if you can't adjust it once it's all back together, that completely defeats the purpose of doing this in the first place. There you go. There's that. Now the reason for that, going back to front, is when you have the shield off, if you install it regularly, you have to come up through the control arm to do the adjustment. Now, once your ride height sensor is back in place, you're not going to be able to do that. So now, it puts it on the outside of the control arm, and you can come in here. This side has uh, some coolant lines on it, so you're going to have to use a shallow socket, but the other side, you've got plenty of room. Now, you take your other knurled washer, install that only goes on one way because of the flat shank you take your lock washer also only goes on one way because of the flat shank and you install it with the tabs facing outward because once everything is tight you're gonna bend one of those tabs down onto the plane of the nut and that is going to keep everything from turning. That's the idea. Should work just fine. So, take this, come in here. Don't want to do it too tight because we're going to be doing alignment on this still. Now you're going to come in, and chances are it's going to be way too far up. So now, alright, now that we've got that in, give this a light tap. Make sure everything's working. There we go. Looking good. It's all the way out. sensor that on. That on. you have to make sure this is elbowed down if you do it the other way it's I don't know what's gonna happen somehow I don't think it'll be very good
tighten this up. Boom. There's my extension. We'll come in and we'll tighten this up. And there we go. And that's the basic gist of the install. And the only thing left, while everything's apart, it might be a good idea to come in here. Oh, that, that's a 19 millimeter. But, uh, definitely a good idea. And while you've got everything apart and can see, just give everything a little looser. full range of motion on everything. Thing left is to give everything a little bit of a tighten. Don't go crazy because it's still going to go on the alignment rack. Align it and go from there. Everything's tight enough so it doesn't loosen up. You don't want it torqued down just yet because you'll have to break everything loose on the alignment rack. Make sure this is mostly tight. Alright, and that's that. That's the basic install.